it's me Emma and today I'm going to be doing a short review on the Nikon Coolpix L120 bridge camera and I'm going to be showing you a few of the features that it has and a general review on it so here it goes so first of all I'm going to take off the lens cap and um, there we go and it has the lens on show for you there it is 4.5 to 94.5 millimeter lens and it's a 21 times optical zoom which is pretty good for a bridge so the zoom on this is also quite good um, it has 21 times zoom but up to about 15 is the better quality you're going to get because when you go further on than that um, in all honesty the quality does get a little bit diminished and it's not as good as if you kept it on 15% and moved forwards a little bit now if you're photographing something that's moving quickly then sports mode is good but it's not as good as a more expensive bridge or even progressing to a digital SLR so it's best to keep this camera I'd say for not family photos but basic photos and amateur photography here's a view of the camera a little bit closer and you can get this camera in red or you can get it in black now I know for the L120 models you can only get it in red or black but the newer models I believe it's the L810 you can get it in blue, black, red and I think it might be grey I'm not entirely sure but you can always research that by yourself for you so you can see a brief pan of the camera and the lens is 21 times zoom as you can see and you can either choose to keep the sticker on or you can take it off yourself and if any of you are wondering I'm shooting this video on the Canon 5D Mark III so that is why my picture quality is so great and here we have the side of the lens and you have the button for the pop-up flash and you also have your zoom in and out on the side in case you don't want the zoom in and out control on top of the shutter so the screen size on the Coolpix L120 is 3 inch and it has a resolution of 921,000 dots so that's if you wanted to find out and we have our record button on the top right um, we have our play button and we have our main control centre and now I'm going to turn on the camera so here we go so this is the camera turned on and as you can see I have just my main camera screen and it is a pretty good picture and you get to know your battery on the top right and when you start shooting it will give you more information so this is an example of one of the photos I've taken on my camera and I think my mode was macro and I'll show you in a minute all the different features that you can see and this camera is surprisingly good quality for a Coolpix now it's not got the option of manual and autofocus which is opposed to a digital SLR which you can but it's still a pretty good camera for its price so I've turned the camera off because with the screen on you couldn't see the um, main controls and, and it was blocking out the light so I've turned the screen off just because um, with the lighting I've got it's kind of messing up my other focuses so I've turned it off just for now and so you can see there is a camera button on the left there is a play button on the right and it's generally a good camera um, they're very easy to use and it's an easier camera to go into um, straight from a digital camera or a compact because although it is professional to an extent it still has basic controls and pretty much anyone can use it. 
And as I've said previously, this camera hosts a whole range of different modes. All you have to do is press the camera button right here and you get on all of these different modes. And at the minute I have my camera on auto and you can easily go through all the different modes like this. And you have sport continuous which I've just talked about. Um, but it's not as good as I've previously said as a digital SLR. I have smart portrait which is actually um, a common common feature on a camera a little bit lower down than this and I'd say just a basic digital and it offers some familiarity for people who've just moved up and um, I'm not entirely sure that all digital SLRs have this and I think it's quite good smart portrait for I think professionals would benefit from this because if you're photographing a wedding and you're there all day it can get a bit tiring and if someone smiles, i.e. a child, um, you may not be switched on to get it and Smart Portrait offers the opportunity to get photos when people are smiling and we have our macro up here and that's also known as close up so you've got all these different features and there's many of these which is very very good and you've got the beach you've also got party slash indoor and that basically pops up your flash for you there is black and white so if you want your photos to be black and white you can add a bit of um, well, not flavour, um, you can add a bit of um, post-editing flair. An interesting one that I found is food and this actually came in very handy when I had a food project for school and you may just think, oh it's macro, but in fact if you click OK then you get um, a colour palette which changes your camera's lens settings and photo settings to what the colour is and I found that immensely helpful and this is a very good feature of this product. So if you want your photo to be a slightly bit more orange you'd use this and peach and white and we go into the blues and it is very helpful. So now I'm going to go on to the video and this camera offers 720p which is generally very good and also something slightly better quality than your average 480p on a standard digital camera then this is the camera for you. This is very good, um, you can zoom in, you can zoom out um, and it is generally very good for videoing and it has wind cancelling and it has a very good microphone. So here is a slightly different view of the top and we have my um, on off button and there is the microphone on the top and there is also the zoom in, zoom out control and of course the button you press when you want to take a photo. Now this camera has a little bit of damage right here and some of the, um, I think it's the paint or the plastic covering has chipped off so um, I'm not entirely sure what that's from. It's um, a pretty robust camera if I say so because I think I've dropped it a few times and um, I think a four year old managed to have it the once but other than that it's in pretty good condition for the amount of time I've had it. I've had it for just over two years now and although I've progressed onto a um, Canon digital SLR I still use this for filming because it has better quality than my um, SLR. I know that sounds strange but it makes sense. Now my camera actually has a small fault which can get extremely annoying when I'm trying to turn my camera on in a quick situation and this camera 
here we go, it goes off by itself. And it does this, and it says turn the lens cap, turn the camera off, remove the lens cap and turn the camera on. And this happens if I turn on my camera and it has absolutely nothing in the way of it, just like this. And it'll just malfunction and set itself to this. And I don't know if it's just Nikon or Canon, as I generally use Canon and I prefer Canon. I'm sorry, Nikon. Um, but I generally just, but I do just think it's wear and tear. And I had this camera when I was 13, which was two years ago, if you've been listening. And um, it's been all over the world, kind of. Um, so it's done its time, it's done well, but I know cameras do have a certain time where if you damage the lens then it's kind of knackered and you may need to invest in a new one. However, this camera um, retails at £130 I believe, but I managed to get it for £100 and I got it from Argos and it's been a brilliant buy, it's got me interested in photography and I have a passion for it so if you're looking for an amateur camera if you're looking for a camera that's going to give you good results then you should get this camera now I'm going to um, give you a little picture in picture of um, some photos I've taken in the top right so you can see some of the quality and here is the bottom of the camera. As you can see, you've got a tripod hole there. You've got the specifications on the bottom left and you've also got where you insert your batteries and your SIM card. And this camera takes four AA batteries, which is really annoying because you have to have four big batteries and it does weigh the camera down. The batteries last for a reasonable time, but it is quite annoying and it is a downfall of this camera. With this camera you get a nice strap and it says Nikon on and it's very useful when you have this camera around your neck or on your shoulder to be able to maintain um, a good um, holding of the camera. So that has been my review on the Nikon Coolpix L120. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any more suggestions, then let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye.